Matthew 24, verse 30, 35, Christ Jesus declared, heaven and earth will pass away, but that his words would never pass away. Jesus declared, heaven and earth would pass away, but his words would never pass away. In other words, everything that he said must be fulfilled to the T. Listen to, I'm reading from the Great Controversy, page 26 by Ellen G. White. <coughs> the last paragraph said, the Lord had declared by the prophet Micah, Micah chapter 3, 9 to 11. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They built up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof, the heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil will come upon us. Micah 3, 9-11 this, so, this is so relevant to our day. When the gospel of Christ is the most profitable merchandise men make it to be. Everywhere you go there is a mega church. And there is a founding pastor. And it's the ministry of this and ministry of that. Wife and husband are pastors. And they enlarge their own borders at the cost of the poor. Huh? And claiming that they are doing it for the Lord. When they are pilfering the people, plundering the poor. Um, praying upon their fear of the Lord. And be making themselves rich that they can live in mansions. And fly Learjets and drive Rolls and Benz and Bentley. <coughs> at the cost of the poor and so that was what was happening in israel it says the priests were selling the judges were doing their their work to get money to get reward and the priests they were they were doing their job for hire the ministers do it today in every church charge large fees to go lecture or to divide divide the word of god among people now if they're not getting so much amount of money they're not going and if the crowd is not large they're not going because they have lost the principle of Christ's principle of one-to-one -one teaching of the gospel. Everything now is for money, for gain, and to make themselves large. That was what was happening in Israel. And they, but the God was judging them. And today, you ministers who are doing the same, God will judge you. Because God does not slumber nor sleep. These words faithfully describe the corrupt and self-righteous inhabitants of Jerusalem. Just like it does today in the U.S in canada in jamaica the caribbean and all over the world and all these people calling themselves bishop and the right reverend and the most honorable when nobody belongs to those those titles because the bible tells us that all our righteousness are as filthy rags while claiming to observe rigidly the precept of god's law they were transgressing all its principles they hated christ because his purity and holiness revealed their iniquity and they accused him of being the cause of all the troubles which had come upon them and the consequences of their sins. Though they knew him to be sinless, they had declared that his death was necessary to their safety as a nation. Quote, if we let him thus alone, said the Jewish leaders, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. John chapter 11 verse 48. If Christ were sacrificed, they might once more become a strong united people. Thus they reasoned, and they concurred in the, in the decision of their high priest that it would be better for one man to die than for the whole nation to perish. Thus is the cause of the wicked at all times. Thus the Jewish leaders had built up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Micah chapter 3 and verse 10. Watch it, Christian people. Watch it. We talk about the world, we better watch ourselves. And yet, while they slew their Savior because he reproved their sins, such was their self righteousness that they regarded themselves as God's favorite people and expected the Lord to deliver them from their enemies. Therefore, continued the prophet, shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places. Of the forest have mercy watch it christian people 
for nearly 40 years after the doom of Jerusalem had been pronounced by Christ himself, the Lord delayed his judgment upon the city and the nation. Wonderful was the long suffering of God towards the rejecters of his gospel and the murder of his son. The parable of the unfruitful tree represented God's dealing with the Jewish nation. The command had gone forth, cut it down, why cumber it in the ground? Luke 3 verse 7, 13 verse 7. But divine mercy had spared it yet a little longer. There were still many among the Jews who were ignorant of the character and work of Christ. And the children had not enjoyed the opportunity or, or received the light which their parents had spurned. Through the preaching of apostles and associates, God would cause light to shine upon them. They would be permitted to see how prophecy had been fulfilled. And not only in the birth and life of Christ, but in his death and resurrection. The children were not condemned for the sins of their parents, but when, with a knowledge of all the light given to their parents, the children rejected the additional light granted to them, they became partakers of their parents' sin and filled up the measure of their iniquity. The long suffering of God towards Jerusalem only confirmed the Jews in their stubborn impenitence, in their hatred and cruelty towards the disciples of Jesus, they rejected the last offer of mercy. Then God withdrew his, withdrew his protection from them and removed his restraining power from Satan and his angels, and the nation was left to the control of the leader she had chosen. Have careful with only the same friends. Her children had spurned the grace of Christ, which would have enabled them to subdue their evil impulses, and now these became the conquerors. Satan aroused the fiercest and most debased passion of the soul. Men did not reason. They were beyond reason, controlled by impulse and blind rage. They became satanic in their cruelty. In the family and in the nation, amongst the highest and the lowest classes alike, there was suspicion, envy, hatred, strife, rebellion, and murder. There was no safety anywhere. Friends and kindred betrayed one another. Parents slew their children and children their parents. The rulers of the people had no power to rule themselves. The rulers of the people had no power to rule themselves. Uncontrolled passions made them tyrants. The Jews have accepted false testimony to condemn the innocent Son of God. No false accusations made their own lives uncertain. By their actions, they had long been saying, Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Isaiah 30 verse 11. Now their desire was granted. The fear of God no longer disturbed them. Satan was at the head of the nation. And the high civil and religious authorities were under his sway. The leaders of the opposing factions at time united to plunder and torture their wretched victims. And again they fell upon each other's forces and slaughtered without mercy. Even the sanctity of the temple could not restrain their horrible ferocity. The worshippers were stricken down before the altar, and the sanctuary was polluted with bodies of the slain. Yet in their blind and blasphemous presumption, the instigators of this hellish work publicly, publicly declared that they had no fear that the Jerusalem would be destroyed, for it was God's own city. To establish their power more firmly, they bribed false prophets to proclaim, even while Roman legions were besieging the temple, that the people were to wait for the deliverance from God. To the last multitudes, to the last multitudes held fast to the belief that the Most High would interpose for the defeat of their adversaries. But Israel had spurned the divine protection, and now she had no defense. And happy Jerusalem, rent by internal dissensions. The blood of her children slain by one another's hands crimson in her streets while alien armies beat down their fortifications and slew her men of war all the predictions given by christ concerning the destruction of jerusalem were fulfilled to the letter the jews experienced the truth of his words of warning with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you again matthew 7 verse 2 with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you again. So may the Lord have mercy upon us.
and help us not to fall into that category.